Welcome to the Binge Breakers Podcast. I'm Jacqueline. I am here to teach you how I overcame bulimia and my binge eating disorder and how you can too. Through simple steps of mind management, repairing your relationship with yourself, understanding your habits, and intuitive eating. Disclaimer, this recording is not intended to be utilized as medical advice or a medical diagnosis. If you think you're in need of medical attention or treatment, please seek it immediately. This recording will also contain sensitive subjects such as binging and purging, weight and depression. Please listen at your own discretion and do what you think is best for you. Hello everyone, welcome to the podcast. This is Jacqueline here and today we're going to talk about the bulimia model. For those of you that are followers or lovers of the Life Coach School, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about right when I say the word model. For those of you that don't, you'll find out. <laughs> AKA, uh, basically an equation for you to find out why you are binging and purging or why you're stuck in any action really. Um, but in particular with bulimia. And we'll look at the bulimia model in, in focus. But first, I just want to say, um, I always like to give a brief little intro of what's going on with me. I'm actually in my car right now for recording a podcast. Don't worry, I have notes. It is a formal podcast. I prepared for this. But today, I was just, um, I was supposed to batch all my podcasts today. And I did the one in the morning, the one about trauma. And then my brain just wasn't having it and I was having like blank after blank and I didn't know what to talk about really struggling it was just a creative block because obviously there's many things I can talk about but um I was just kind of like basically just saying none of that is worthwhile and so finally I just it was around one o'clock and usually go to the gym with my boyfriend but he wasn't able to go to the gym today and he was just told me that I was like you know what I'm going to go to the gym. So I went to the gym finally around 2.30 in the afternoon, which is not usual for me. And I brought my iPad along with me and my notebook. And I just figured, okay, maybe some physical activity will help me. And it did. After working out for just a little bit, like giving my brain some peace, just chilling out, listening to some music, a podcast, and then lifting some weights, my brain came up with like crystal clear, like options of what to talk about. One of which was one a subject I'd already had in the background. I was like, oh yeah, that is exactly what I should talk about. So for you guys that are having creative block or feel like I can't figure out the solution to things, sometimes the best thing you need to do is just walk away from it. Now, again, there's also time for pushing through and maybe I could have pushed through today, probably at some point could have done it. But I think that the podcast today will be higher quality because I took a step back and gathered myself and did some things to help blood flow my body physically. And now we're here. Okay, so overview of the podcast, we're going to talk about the bulimia model, what it is, first of all, why it can be a helpful tool for you in recovery, and how to kind of use it and play around with it. Now, the bulimia model is just kind of a reference to what's called the model, which is not my original idea. So I want to give a huge shout out to the Life Coach School and Brooke Castillo for creating this thing that she calls the model. And it's basically an adoption of cognitive behavioral therapy, in my opinion. It's, it's basically what cognitive behavioral therapy is. But what she did is, it, is she put it into a logical, basically, equation of how your thoughts directly impact you, the results in your life. And it's going to be a little bit harder to explain. It's better to have a visual but basically a model is just um, a series of five lines basically and one line is for your circumstance so whatever is going on in your life your thought about that circumstance is the second line and then your third line is feelings what feeling you have that those thoughts provoke and then the action that you take from those feelings and then the result that those actions provide the basics of what the model is and if you want to know like a full in-depth thing about it go check out the life coach school podcast they have tons of episodes on the model but it's a very clear way to lay out the thoughts that are affecting you and how it is impacting your results in life because the basis of the model and the basis of cognitive behavioral therapy is that your thoughts directly impact the results that you have going on in your life they impact your feelings therefore your they in, impact how you act and then that of course affects what goes around on around you in your life whatever you touch whatever you do it affects those results and i've been saying this on the podcast for a long time too that your thinking is the most important part to recovery um and it's the core foundation of my coaching 
uh, when I coach with people, of course, I take into account, you know, what's your nutrition like? What is your sleep habits like? What is physically going on with you? And what's going on with you around you? What's your stress level like? But at the core of my coaching, I help people figure out what thoughts are creating the reality in front of them. And there are a lot of thoughts that are creating the reality in front of you in bulimia. And I usually don't just whip out a model for clients in coaching calls. What I typically do is talk with them and then I kind of, instead of saying, what is the circumstance? What is the thought? I typically will tell them, okay, you're thinking this. How do you feel when you think this? And let them kind of come to their own conclusion about the thoughts that they're having that are creating it. Because sometimes when you are in it, you're not necessarily aware of the errors going on in your thinking that are actually creating that. But the reason I'm bringing it up today is that I actually wrote out a model for someone, like a thought equation for someone, um, one of my clients the other day. And I did this because she was in such, she was, she's having a really hard time and she was in a bunch of confusion about why she kept doing the same thing over and over again. And I don't want to, you know, give away too much to respect her privacy. Uh, but basically she's in a situation where she has a lot of work to do. And she keeps pushing off sleep and then will binge because that supposedly will like help while she's working, right? To like mitigate the stress that she's feeling. And then she'll wind up, you know, going to bed at six in the morning or not sleeping at all sometimes. And then it keeps repeating over and over and over again. And she knows at least a little bit that she needs to get sleep at some point. And the less sleep she gets, the harder it is to make better decisions. But she was saying to me the other day, other day, I don't know why I keep doing this. I don't know why I keep binging, why I keep not sleeping, like why this keeps repeating over and over again. And so what I did is I had, we've talked about it many times, but I just wrote her a clear model because I needed her to make sense of what was going on. The problem was, is that she was confused and that's a big barrier to being able to recover. Why it's important to look at this model so you can know exactly what the problem is. Because if you don't know why you're doing something, you can keep being confused and keep never coming to the conclusion of what's going on. Knowing why something isn't working is how you fix it. If you don't know why, if you don't know the cause, then you cannot solve it. I mean, this doesn't always work. Of course, there are some things that like there are mechanisms going on in cancers, right, that we can't figure out how to solve. But at least we know how it works to some degree so we can keep on working towards creating that solution for it. But knowing the cause of something is half the battle. A doctor, you wouldn't go to a doctor and say one random symptom and they just give you medicine. They would try to figure out more. And so with this client, when she was in so much confusion and disarray, I wrote out a model and I'll give you, you know, her rough model here. Her circumstance, one simple circumstance she has every day is work is due. She has work due that she needs to have done. And I'm saying need to, that's a thought. Really, when you write down the circumstance of whatever is going on with you, you want it to be as neutral as possible because you don't want to get your emotions and clouded things there. Just put, if you had to write something for like a data scientist sheet, write as neutral as possible. So work is due according to, you know, whoever her employers are. And then... The important thing is, is I put down the next thing is her thoughts about that circumstance. And she was like, why do I keep doing this over and over again? And I put down, she thinks I have so much to do. I have to do this work. It's mandatory. And then the most key thought here is that I can't handle it. It's easier to binge than it is to try to not binge and handle the urge and then do work at the same time just giving in to the binge urge so I can get my work done, not have to deal with bulimia recovery right now will help. And so when you think it's just easier, it's easier to binge than it is not to binge, then you're going to feel resolved and probably pressured to binge because like cornered, like you have no other option. And then what actions are you going to take from that emotion? You're going to take actions like obviously binge and perch. You're going to binge and perch for quick energy and a solution to the problem. You're going to work and binge at the same time, which is not very helpful. Multitasking is not something anyone's really that good at. Um, and it's going to make work less efficient. And then it also is going to put off sleep. And then the result is exhaustion. Still has lots of work to do. Reduce cognitive function because of the lack of sleep and the binging and purging. 
And the habit cycle is reinforced. It keeps going and going again. So I sent that to her and I usually wouldn't do that sort of thing, but I sent it to her because she needed to see like, this is, this is why you keep justifying it day after day after day. And it's not trying to blame her and you know, people that are in rough scenarios. I don't want to, I don't want to speak lightly about this. She's in a scenario that's very stressful for anyone. It's not to blame her, but it is to show her this is exactly why you keep doing that over and over again. There are things that you're saying in that moment that are justifying doing it, that are convincing you. And this is why. So you need to develop, or you need to decide that this isn't what you want to think anymore. This isn't what you want to do anymore. And coming to the conclusions on your own. She, the next step after knowing why is then coming up with, well, do I want to keep on doing that and deciding? And then having your reasons for why you want to start thinking, thinking differently and building evidence for the other argument and coming to that conclusion. But that's the basis of it. And I know people, um, especially on Instagram, some people will get triggered by the things I, I say, like, you know, you have a cho- you always have a choice. Your thoughts um, are a huge part of bulimia as a habit. And I know full well that bulimia isn't just simply a habit. It's a huge part of it. There are health things going on. There are things that you need to get right. But and, and when someone is sleep deprived, they're not thinking clearly. It's harder to make bad decisions. When someone's just had a diet of consistently binging day after day after day, it is way harder to make proper decisions and to think clearly. I'm not trying to say that it's easy to just change your thoughts and, and start thinking differently. But at the end of the day, even when someone is in is having a horrible time, they do have to start taking some sort of action in the other direction, even though it will be difficult. And that starts with them thinking about taking that action. For you to make any kind of change, you first have to start with the root of the problem, which is the thoughts that are creating that emotion, which are then driving that action, which are creating the results. The thoughts about the circumstances going on. And I said on an email this week about you don't have to do every, anything. You just may not like the consequences of not doing that thing. You don't have to, you want to. You push yourself to do those things. But please, if you are feeling super overwhelmed and confused in bulimia recovery, in, in just bulimia, if you're not even like at the stage of wanting to recover yet, but you're like, why does my life keep doing this? I'd highly recommend using this method. I wrote down a few models that you guys might be familiar with. One, circum- one model is a circumstance with you have the urge to binge. That's the circumstance. You have an urge to binge. That's as neutral as I could make it. And thoughts that follow are, I can't do it, the urge will be too hard to fight, this, it will never go away, it's too difficult, I actually want to binge, that's, the urge means that I want to binge, I, I was wrong before, I actually want bulimia in my life, and then the feelings that provoke that are hopelessness, or just, um, solid on the decision of wanting to binge and then your actions are give up binge and the result is binging right and the habit reinforced and bulimia keeps on going another circumstance is you ate more than you needed maybe physically or mentally i don't know but the basic basics of it is i overate and your thoughts about it are i'll gain weight i'm out of control i don't know how much i ate purging is my only option i don't know how much i ate and i'll continue on so i need to purge my body won't t- I'll continue to overeat. There's the only option is to purge. And even if you aren't, and even for an example, like my client, even if she is extremely, like someone's extremely sleep deprived, you are like, well, how can they make proper decisions? They at least need to make a decision to prioritize sleep. That's one thing I'm trying to help my client with is that she needs to start prioritizing sleep or things aren't going to get much better. She has to start prioritizing sleep over bulimia. And sleep over sometimes other things that are due, but her health and her mental health is the most important thing ever. Without that, she can't do much else. But it's got to start with her doing it. It cannot start with her being confused about why she's doing it and just being hopeless to the fact that she can't get out of it. That there's no other way she can get out of it unless something else changes. It's got to be her, right? And it's even like, even if she did feel that way, then she has to make the decision to go to treatment or something or go put herself somewhere so that she can get better and get the help she needs in a facility that would that would facilitate that right knowing exactly how you were justifying something like binging or not sleeping or doing whatever action that keeps fucking you over in your life is completely vital to changing it and that's why this is so important 
And it's also very important so you can stop being confused and stop, stop, start changing things, which I think that, you know, sometimes we do just get confused, right? It is just like, I don't know what to do. And there's guidance for that. That's why in my coaching, I'm never just like, it's your thought. Okay, talk to you next week. Like, obviously, I give people suggestions and guidance as well. But sometimes I think we know what to do. But staying in confusion about it prolongs making the hard thing that we know we have to do. And makes it, you know, let's not have to do it, right? It makes us push it off. Makes it, it's, oh, it's confusing why I can't do it. Oh, it's not really within my control. Oh, it's not actually something I can help. It's not something I have to do it this way. So it's just going to keep on going. It's a way of kind of omitting that responsibility. And I'm not, again, not trying to say that to shame anyone. I do that all the time still in my own life. It's a lifelong process to get, get out of that confusion and then start making decisions. I fall into the trap all the time, but I fell into that trap for a long time with bulimia and it really had to come down to me starting to make some changes and trying to consistently pick myself back up and pick myself back up over and over again and really recognize that my thinking was the first place to start with and that I had gaps in time where I could make that decision and it was hard to accept it really was hard to accept but once I accepted it it was so much easier to move forward with that and so if you're feeling like no I, I want to stay in this confusion this model could be something really helpful for you to just look at just write it out and just sit with that. Don't don't try to change it. A lot of people will find discover the model and then they'll they'll be like, "Oh, well, I'll just switch this thought for that thought." No, just sit in sit in the acceptance that this is why it is. Sit in the acceptance of this is what's producing the result that I that has created here. And then when you come to that realization, it'll start opening up the idea of, "Well, what else could I do to get a different result? What else might I change? Why don't I want to believe this anymore? And start just asking yourself those questions. We so often want to just change our thoughts right away. And you have to come to your conclusions naturally. It takes people a little bit to build new beliefs, build new ideas. So don't expect yourself to suddenly change your belief. But knowing is the first step in changing that. If you want to change your belief, start trying to argue for the other side. Start trying to look for how the belief that you want to believe could be true and start trying to convince yourself of that, trying to look for the evidence for that. That's the best advice I have for you on that. So anyway, thank you for listening to the podcast today. It's a short and sweet episode, but I hope that it has been helpful. This is not something to be taken lightly. This really is a very, very helpful and concrete and clarifying tool that you can use in your recovery. Highly recommend you go check out the Life Coach School for more in-depth tutorials on that tool. It's not my tool, but I use it in my coaching and I use it all the time in my own life. And it is so helpful. It's something that you can always fall back on. It's an amazing tool for sure. Uh, so consider this if you're feeling very confused and not sure why you're doing things this can definitely clear things up for you make it very crystal clear it's like an equation for your thoughts of course if you need more support i offer one-to-one coaching and an online course you can find both of those at bingebakers.com um, I would love to hear from you and work with you. The best way to start working with me is just to set up a consult and you can do that on my website and we'll talk about why you're struggling in recovery, what's actually causing that, what's going on for you in particular. And then we will talk about how you can start recovering and whether or not we're a good fit or not. And then if we are, we can start working together, which is always super, super cool. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Please never give up on yourselves, my friend. It's, I know I say that every time, but I say that for a reason because never giving up in yourself is the best investment you can make. You are the most important investment in your life. Okay, have a great weekend. Bye.